It could be that killing off Bond has not only maybe potentially made it Craig's worst to me as a mm. Bond fan, it may have made it the worst in the series. I know. What's going on? It's your good buddy, Head of Section, after a moderately long absence from, moderately. from posting it's been any like content. This. Yeah. Uh, welcome to another video in the series of, and this is sort of a weird one to sort of go back to, uh, the Bond films is the last film of each actor, the worst. We yeah. even included Spectre because at the time it was the last one and we decided to go for it. Um, but, by the way, I'm being remiss. This is my good buddy. David Zeritsky for the Bond experience. There you go. And we're here in, in the dungeon. In the, in dungeon. the collection. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to revisit this um, this topic, and we're and it's kind of an interesting one because, again, you know, we when we did all of the last films, you know, these are films that we've lived with for many many years. Mm -hmm. This one is is the film that <laughs> is still f reasonably fresh in our minds. It's the yes. newest one and probably will be for quite a while. Still shiny. The expiration date hasn't come on, but I think it might be important to mention that um, the, the last time, well, the first time we saw this film mm -hmm. was last year in uh, either September, October, and when we're filming this, it's the middle of May mm -hmm. in the following year. So, so we have let a little bit of time in between. Yes, the smoke is the dust has settled a little bit, so we can kind of go back and 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 see if our initial uh, thoughts still still sit. By the way, something that jumps out at me right away when we did this the first time. Yes, you you were were joining the 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 discussion. You were usually wearing something oh. that was reminiscent of the film. That was that was something that was right from the film. Yes. And I noticed this time you didn't do that, so I'm curious. Is that a conscious decision? You did notice that. It was semi-conscious. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I am wearing the No Time to Die Omega watch. Okay. So, watch check, that's what I'm wearing. That is, this is going to be terrible to say, that's all I can muster. Uh -huh. Because in all the other ones we did, even Spectre, there was a... a just a celebration of it, you know, because even like we say, is it the worst film? Is it the best film? Even the worst film, there's reasons to celebrate. It's part of the whole canon, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And we're Bond fans, so we love it all. With this one, because it is so fresh and new and I've had, which we're going to get into, so many issues with the film, mm. it's hard for me to put on a trench coat or a Henley. I do from time to time, but frankly, I've been gravitating a lot more to the older Bonds and to the older Craig films mm -hmm. when it comes to style and fashion. Wow. This isn't all a bar brown top though, so it is a Craig brand. Okay, so it's, re it's related, but it's the, so that's interesting. It's good like, for you for calling that out and being observant. I, well, you know, I said, you know, it, what was interesting too when we started this, I, I kind of, again, we, David and I had, had spoken about, you know, doing something where we're revisiting the film. Right. Um, and I kind of said, hey, let's go back and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cap off our series of, of the, is the last one the worst? And I kind of did that, not even really thinking that there was any chance in hell that you would say, yes, it's the worst. I just thought that the answer was going to be no. But it's possible you might actually lean that way. I mean, I've, I've made an observation out there, and obviously we'll get into my observations, that for many people that came out of the gate, and I, I have a theory that we'll get into, mm -hmm. of, you know, the people that loved this film from the very get-go, um, they fall into certain themes, if you will. Uh, I've checked with them, and it would be interesting to check with you, mm -hmm. and honestly, their love of the film has waned a bit. It has diminished, and it, it could be re-watching, it could be talking to others, it could be the, the veneer or the shine of a mm -hmm. new movie has come off, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and that that's something that always happens. I mean, we again, we we, we come out of the film, and and we're too. I, I feel you know, again, you and I have known each other since just years. after Casino. Seriously, yeah. a long time, and so we've we've kind of routinely had that experience of like the first you know first flush of of the the burst of excitement yeah. of the film, and then you know time kind of goes by, and we we keep talking about it, and then you know the the conversation always kind of 
simmers down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm not surprised that that's happened with this one at all. Um, but, you know, I guess I am. I, I, I'm still kind of surprised that a lot of people aren't really that wild about this. So you, you And you've heard this, too, from other people. Yeah. That some of the ones, like, out of the gate, they were like, whoa, are kind of like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, yeah, let, let's explore that. By the way, you did say something that I want to call out to everybody else that I didn't realize until you just said it just now. Our relationship, our friendship, which I think is, you know, people know about our friendship mm-hmm. in the Bond community, um, really developed, evolved, and has been created within the Daniel Craig era. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. we were brought up together, so to speak, within yeah, Daniel yeah. Craig from a friendship standpoint. The, the, fir- the first contact mm. we ever had was, was you, you had done an article. It was, it was, it was casino, the Frugal Casino Royale. Yes. And, and I remember reaching out saying, hey, dude, this article was great. I thought it was spectacular. And, and you said, great, thanks, whatever. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Delete, but, block. But by the time we got to Quantum, you and I were, were going to the premiere together. Yeah. And so we literally were doing doing the routine where you, you we, we saw the saw the film came out. We're sitting yeah. over drinks, talking about what we thought. Events, um, parties, vacations to the Bahamas. Oh yeah, and then yeah, you know, significant others. All this time later, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, but that 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 kind of thing that we've always done, you know, talking about the film as it came out. What did we think? And yep. and, and and as oh, you know, I can recall, you know. Quantum, Skyfall, Spectre, the the first burst of, of excitement, and yeah. then over time, it was like, well, well, now what do we think about it? So, I think this falls right in line with that. And I think, so if I think back, even Quantum of Solace, as much as I'm a poster child for it, initially, that first initial reaction to a film, you and I have been lockstep. We've been in agreement. You know, you were kind of like, man, with Quantum, and when Quantum first came out, I mm-hmm. was kind of like, I think we've always been lockstep in everything. Spectre, Skyfall, etc. This has been the first one where we've really kind of gone like this. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so by the way, the premise that you had created that we've enlisted ourselves in is, is the first the best, is the last the worst, all these things. Mm-hmm. And we did Spectre, and we did say, I think at the time, let's remind the audience, mm-hmm. that we did think Spectre was the worst Daniel Craig film. Yes. I think we both agreed on that. Yes. In fact, I remember having that conversation, and I really had sort of an awakening because because quantum was the one that I always struggled with and quantum for me was more not so much that it was it wasn't a lame boring you know misses the mark kind of film right there was a lot that was incredibly effective about it and there was a lot that I kind of thought was just a little too you know in your face about it yeah. and it kind of put me off and I was like you know I got a lot of issues with this one um, Spectre I kind of felt was was more that was just a swing and a miss. It was. Yeah. It was. It kind of. It was trying to do something. Didn't hit the mark for me. Uh, too many missteps in it, and it just wasn't working. Um, so right. So to your point, it, it's. It, yeah. It, it. It was interesting. Yeah. It's, so it'll be interesting now to see. And it's, it, it's funny too because I. I kind of feel like you know we tend to look at these last um, actors films. Mm-hmm as the worst because they tend to be where they run out of steam you know they, they tend to just sort of run out of gas like right. you know um we talked about diamonds talked about a beautiful kill we talked about the uh, dying of the day um maybe not so much with dying of the day uh, but i think a lot of times the actors have just been they've been running at it too long they're they're getting long on the tooth they they tend to just again run out of steam yeah um i feel like the problems that we're going to talk about with this film wouldn't fall into that category. Correct. And the more I thought about it when I was rewatching this, and I know you rewatched it recently, mm-hmm. is this is the first Bond actor who I think before the filming even started, he knew this would be his last one. Yeah. It was a conscious yeah. discussion, remark. So he's like, you know what? I've got to bring it. I've got to bring the energy. I've got to bring the high acting. Mm-hmm. I got to make sure this is the best. I, I truly believe Daniel Craig went into this saying, this is my Bond swan song for yeah. real. Mm-hmm. And I've got to make it the best. The other Bond actors didn't have that luxury, if you want to call that Agreed. luxury. Yes. So I think that there, that will be an interesting discussion of what's the difference between this mm. and like a die another day moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point. That's an excellent point. So I guess we got to just... <laughs> Do start it. talking and yeah. start talking. Where do where do we begin? Do we do do we do just do like a like um overview? What's my opinion of the film? Sure, I, I I'll I'll start by asking you um, because it has been a few months. And I remember when you first 
saw it and mm-hmm. you called me and my mouth hit the floor because you yeah. were like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's per- I, Yes, he had to die. That was the perfect ending. And I'm sitting there like, who hurt you, Joe? Who hurt- <laughs> and who are you? Where? Who took my best friend? So a question, this being May 14th, mm. many months later, has the movie gotten better? Has it gotten worse at all? I, I think, believe it or not, it's roughly stayed the same because I think that I still well maybe I'll maybe I'll say that um, for the most part it's stayed the same I think that the the um, the when I first saw it right. there were a lot of flaws in it that that I could see they were there um, but for me they were as M would say out in the ether like they, it was almost like I, I knew they were there but they're just kind of out there and every and Bond film has its issues hey, boom exactly yeah. 100% um, they all have issues that you can usually write off to yeah. you know production problems or just you know like I wish they kind of polished that in the script just one more time before they mm-hmm. went forward um, so yeah I, I knew they were there but again I was so elated by the whole thing that I just wasn't even looking at it. Um, I think over time, I think listening to a lot of really good, thorough reviews, discussions about the film, talking about some of these things. Um, again, I acknowledged them before, but now I kind of see them a little more clearly. Right. So they, they kind of, it's almost like it, so now it sits on the shelf, you know, with, with the film. Um, tiny little layer of dust sitting on it. I, 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 I've made peace with a lot of it. I still say, though, my enjoyment of the film is still right up there. I mean, I literally was film. watching... Yeah, I mean, on a, you know, again, it, it's... You, you know, when Scott, one of the things I learned from doing all the reviews with Scott, you know, when, when we went through every mm-hmm. single solitary movie, depending on... Like, there was, always, there was always moments where we were kind of criticizing little parts. And usually, one of us would sort of say, this doesn't work, and this thing in the script is silly, or whatever... Yeah. And then the other one would somehow, you know, usually kind of get, you know, jump to its defense and say, well, you know, there were production issues. We know we know that there was a, a writer strike or we know that there was, a, you know, th- this this person was was moved around. So and I kind of noticed that if we loved the film, right, we tended to be very forgiving of those flaws. Sure. If if the film wasn't working for us in the first place, then suddenly all of those flaws are glaring and, and we Highlighted, can't forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, so again, as I watch this film, I'm very, you know, in touch with the fact that I'm being very forgiving of a lot of things in the film because so much of it worked. Um, you know, even I remember looking back, I remember when the trailer first came out, just, just kind of being, you know, starry eyed and mesmerized by the beautiful colors, oh, by yeah. the cinematography and I, and, you know, and I could see where they were headed with this. So I was already kind of on board, you know. And then once I saw it, and I, I know I've said this to you already, <laughs> once you saw, once they once they do that bit, where's 007, and they cut to James Bond, totally looking like a Sunspell ad on, on, the, on the boat, <laughs> um, yeah. getting off the boat with fish in one hand and the harpoon gun in the other hand. I'm like, that's it. I'm, you got me. I, I'm, yeah. I'm on board. Um so yeah, so I guess once I was that, you know, taken with the film, all the other stuff just kind of just it was just got past me, and I just didn't see it. I was bl- I was totally blinded to it, yeah. um, and I'm still reasonably blinded to it. So for the most part, it's held up. Yeah, and for me, um, it's it's a weird discussion, and it's more complicated than yes, it's gotten worse or no, it hasn't for me at least because. The anticipation, and I've told this story before, but, you know, sitting in Royal Albert Hall, watching it, and then hearing, like, this, like, everybody, shock applause, as I call them now. <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't like a slow yeah. clap. It was just like, did that actually effing happen? Like, and then all of us, like, going to, like, a funeral afterwards. Yeah, you know, yeah. whether you went to the casino to drink or back to your hotel to drink or at mm-hmm. home to drink, everybody went to drink. Yeah. Um, many people fell off the wagon that night. <laughs> but the whole point was that um, once I had that in me, and here's the strange discussion, I, it, it's almost like, oh, this is going to be terrible to say, it's almost like PTSD, mm. where I, I had such a shock about his death. Not that I knew, not that I didn't know it, could happen, mm. but that they actually went there with nothing nebulous about it. Like yeah. he is dead. Yeah. That 
all of a sudden, there was a certain amount of denial slash slight anger about the film yeah. to where then if you have if you have anger with someone you know what mm -hmm. happens you start to see well you gained weight and oh god look at that pimple <laughs> and you wore those shoes yeah, yeah, to a yeah. bar mitzvah yeah, yeah. like you know you start to get a little nasty <laughs> um, not full malice but a little mm -hmm. nasty and I started to get that way with this movie mm -hmm. so although I too believe it is well made well shot looks great there are moments and scenes whole scenes in this film that are phenomenal. Everybody did an amazing yeah. job acting. Eh, we'll talk about Safin in a moment, but, <laughs> um, but, but I started to see every small little mar and taint of a plot mm. hole. The weakness of the bad guy, you know, the disconnect of, you know, Lashana Lynch, honestly not being served up in the most powerful way that she could be. I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna play that guy right now. And then I, I walked back from it and I looked and I go, you know what? I do have a lot of issues, and it's not just his death, her rump. So this this shock and awe moment has built a, a, a packaging around the film. Mm -hmm. So I saw it a week ago in preparation for this discussion, uh -huh. and I remember watching it. And I, you know, usually I'll get with a Bond film. <laughs> You, you need to know this, like a whole nut. I slouch, <laughs> I get popcorn, I get a drink and this. I just sat up, like almost like a nasty critic. Like, you know, <laughs> thumbs gaping like this. And like, it was like, like school mom and come on, parents in it. <laughs> yeah, show me, show me what you got. Show me what, fill in the gaps of my mm. perception of you. And it, it didn't get worse, but like you, it kind of confirmed my original thought, which is I'm desperate, desperate, and the other 24 films, even Spectre, deliver this, mm. for my Bond to deliver an enthralling, intriguing, but mm. thrilling escapism, heroic. And honestly, I want to feel great after the film ends. I want to smile, laugh. Mm -hmm. I want to look around like, go ahead, somebody tangle with me. <laughs> I want my shoulders to be peeled back. I uh -huh. want to look at a trench coat from the movie and go, ah, oh, yeah, that's Bond. He's freaking yeah, yeah. badass. My Bond is this. My Bond is ashes now. Yeah. You know, my Bond had a child and he, you know, minutes before he died, he cored an apple and made pancakes. <laughs> what was it? Come on. Emotional, damn it! You know, he picked up uh, a stuffed animal and died with a stuffed animal in his suspenders. Mm -hmm. I'll even take Roger Moore and a clown over that. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm giving a lot of detail, but for me, it has not gotten better, but it also hasn't become this, like, gaping maw of a wound. Mm. Okay. A well, long diatribe. Well, that's why we're As here. I drink out of my No Time to Die... <laughs> Branded bottle. So every time I talk to a fan who reaches out, they they want to talk about the movie a little bit. Right. <laughs> and whenever they say, oh, no, 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 didn't like it. My first question, and I'll say yeah. this, ask you the same thing. I always ask the same thing. I said, is it is it strictly the ending that you don't like, or is it the whole thing you have an issue with? It's not the whole thing, mm -hmm. but it's not just the ending. So it's somewhere in the middle. So okay. um, I actually think I would be more forgiving of the ending because I would I would encapsulate it and thematically put it that, yeah, No Time to Die is the one where he dies. But what a strong bad guy. What an incredible plot. And they keep mm. the movie going and moving. And you know what? The third act in Spectre was a little bit of a mess, but the third act in No Time to Die, oh my gosh. you know. And they filled in all the plot hole, but they didn't. And I also thought it was a rather uneven movie. Okay. What I mean by that, you have Matera, Jamaica, and Cuba, which are superlative, mm. you know, gushing forward, could have changed the game of Bond films. You brought it all back to us. But then you have these scenes like with Blofeld and Safin mm. and Bond and, you know, Safin's plot points and who he is and even the moments with Madeline where it's like, where is this going? Like, this yeah. seems like it's been imparted in here. And I can't help but feel... Uh, tinfoil hats on firmly, let me put yours on as well, <laughs> that they painted themselves in a corner and in the editing room, or maybe even the writer's lounge, they said, ah, oh, crap, guys, guess what we forgot? We forgot this moment. And they missed opportunities. Like mm. even the, the child running around and she comes out of a 
a, under a table and goes, Mama. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah. You could have had some really interesting moments. Even Madeline being a badass and saving her own daughter. Yeah. Like, so many things. And him letting her go, like... There's just so many head scratchers in the yeah. last third of the film. Mm -hmm. It taints it for me. Yeah, see, it's interesting, and I, you know, and, and you and I have talked, and you know, and again, I've been so swamped this year. I haven't put squad out for content this year. Um, but one of the things that was a video that was sort of always in the back of my mind, and and is essentially sort of becoming a part of this video, um, was one where I and I was going to call it defending the ending. Ooh. And and the whole point is that you know the and people just kind of squared their feelings with the ending that the whole thing would would work for more people because the I think the rest of the film works so well. Right. Um, I don't know maybe in retrospect if that's the case. Even but, for you. Um. Well, I mean the ending. I, I don't really have a problem with the ending, and, right. and I kind of feel like see it's interesting, and and it also could be the fact when I saw it. Again, I didn't go to London and see it opening night. It took me, you know, with the rest of yeah. the U.S., it took a, like a week and a half, two weeks before yeah. we actually got to see That's it. True. So it was very hard to avoid spoilers. And I had just a tiny little, little, little kind of get through the cracks where... Did where someone I, tell you? Somebody blurted it out there. And um, but, it, but when I heard it, I was kind of like, all right, well, you know, but I was thinking like, A, they could be wrong. B, even if they're right, and plus this was something we, we considered as a possibility. I right. mean, this was sort of floating around, you know, before this. Yeah. Um, but the other part of it was like, but they still could do that thing that a lot of films do, where the hero dies at the end, yeah. but right at the last second something happens like where it's like a little, or, little yeah. glimmer, right, a little yeah, glimmer yeah. of hope. So I was sort of waiting to see, like, okay, if it's true, how is it going to happen? Right. So, so I kind of, so again, I, I had that, insight going into it so when they finally got to the point you know where it all blows up and i was like oh 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 it happened <laughs> there ain't no glimmer of hope after this right yeah. there's there's nothing yeah he ain't coming back from right, this right. um so I and, I and i remember the first time i saw it i was very emotionless because mm. again i'm watching it now through my critical eye i'm watching it as Studying. i'm reviewing the film as i'm watching it which is probably what, not what you want to do exactly so but i do remember kind of again it was funny because i i just sort of watched it very stoically okay it happened and okay we're, we're moving on and then the credits come up and i turn to mary i says what'd you think of it she's like in shock, she's she's like, and I, and I kind of was wow. like, oh right, that's how I should be right now, but I'm I'm not because I because yeah. again I'm thinking about it the wrong way. Member. Exactly right. Yeah. She she's absorbing it the way it, it's meant to be. Did absorbed. she like it by the way? Uh yeah. It's, well, we haven't had like a lot of in depth discussion okay. about it, but she she definitely I I think she liked it walking out, but she she did feel, I think like a lot of people like I can't believe they killed James Bond. You just killed James Bond. So, but after I had seen it, and after I had gone back a couple times, seen it some more, you know, I I, I started to ask myself what I thought of it, and I and I, I, one of the realizations that I had was that, you know, if they did that thing where say he he dies off camera, hmm. and then at the end the two are driving away in the car, and then they just sort of pass by this silhouette of somebody standing in in, in yeah. on on the yeah. mountain who looks very much like Daniel Craig. Right. I really probably would have said yeah, at that at that point I'm thinking to myself now I'm just debating on which cinematic technique should have been used should have been thrown in there. Right. I don't think if they did that it would have improved it. And frankly I said to myself I I think I'm more comfortable with the idea that they saw it through. Yeah. That they had the the chutzpah go balls. To just do it, just put it out there. Yeah. This is this is what's really and how this is going to end. And not, do, not do one of those clever little moments, right? right exactly. Because again, it wouldn't it wouldn't have really felt. I don't think it would have been satisfactory. I think you would have it would have taken back. Again, you went to the trouble to kill the character off. Yeah. Now you're going to undo it in the last second just to just in case you want to do a sixth yeah. one, that kind of thing. So I I I was really okay with it. And and plus, I still go back to the idea of you know. We sort of started out with what I would call. See, it's interesting because we're we're getting. I I think a lot of what I'm thinking also comes from the idea that we're getting so much material 
so much multiverse stuff. Yeah. You know, we're getting a lot of Marvel movies, especially, yeah, that are in the true. multiverse. There's actually another one playing that I'm dying to see that has nothing to do with Marvel. Um, and, and, and even, like, just when we were kids, we had, like, the What If comics that mm-hmm. they, they sort of picked up on this. So we're getting a lot of, like, just experiments in in other ways we could be doing these characters. Right. And that could also be conditioning to me to the idea that I kind of have always felt that the whole Craig era has simply been another take on the yeah, character. Yeah, the beginning and an end. I mean, they, this is the first time they came right out and said, we are rebooting this character. We're starting from scratch. Yeah. And, and interestingly, and I, of course, again, going back in time to our earlier thoughts about, well, like once they did Casino Royale, so what happens now? Are they going to do Live and Let Die, the original book? Are they going to go back and do the series? Are we going right. to see Tracy again? Are we going to... And they ended up doing this kind of hodgepodge of things that were... Some things that were from the novels, some things that were from the earlier films, mm-hmm. some things that are just you know made up from scratch. I mean, we got Blofeld, who is a classic Bond character, but we have others yeah. we they, who have nothing to do with Fleming or the old films. So basically, mm-hmm. you're right. This this whole thing has been kind of this this era on, unto itself. So the fact that this one ends this way for me, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, and I. I, I can absolutely get behind what you're saying, too, because they definitely went in a very unique way. I'll even say almost like a Cotter way of, like, this is going to be darker than you could have ever imagined. We're going to gut punch you. My whole outlook is uh, go back, rewind the VHS tape, and if I was sitting in that room with Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson and pitching to them the idea, I could also say, you know something? In the Craig era, it's been a very um, Byronic, I just found out that word, a very <laughs> angsty hero, uh-huh. you know, an anti-hero. He's been very dark and brooding and he has sex with a woman and he growls and he has a beautiful Heineken and he's like, oh, it sucks. You know, he has all these Vespers and he's like, I'm brooding about someone that just died. He, he's not enjoying life. He is this self-loathing mm. assassin and that's yeah. really dark. Imagine, if you will, if the last Craig film harkens back as a celebration of James Bond and you have a fun film. Mm. And I'm not saying like Octopussy or Moonraker, but I'm saying a fun film where he does the tropes and you lay it all out and there's action and interesting characters and, you know, sidelines. And you've got these henchmen that are true henchmen and you've got all these things. And, you know, something at the end, maybe Daniel Craig is like, you know, betting somebody that he met like. (laughs) Six frames ago. I don't yeah. know. I'm just yeah. throwing that last one out to bother people. But, you know, I I know it's a little bit of a throwback, but I keep going back in my mind to the absolute international success of Cobra Kai. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it literally swings the sword and strikes off the head of people that are politically correct, as well as people that aren't politically correct. Mm. And it has fun doing it. Yeah. And I'm saying is, I think you can have your cake and eat it too. And I'm hoping and hoping for Bond 26 that they take it and they come back to, you know what? Bond films should be thrilling, adventurous, fun, and heroic. And people, just like Star Wars, yeah. should leave feeling great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think and, and I think maybe part of the reason why this one doesn't bother me as much is because I feel that that's probably exactly what's going to happen where where the next one and I'll, and I'll actually swing it the other way. I'll do it one better. Um like when you say the next one should be fun and should be this and should be that. I think what the next one will be is whatever audiences are clamoring for at the moment. Hmm. Because I kind of feel like the, the the Craig era again. Go back to the the Jason Bourne days, the Batman Begin days, where people were starting to feel like, all right, we've had enough silliness. We want to kind of get into these characters a little right. bit more. So I kind of feel like, it, in a lot of ways, um, they kind of painted themselves into a little bit of a corner because they started yeah. this journey that way, right? And wanted to see it through till the end. In fact, I, I'll even take that idea a little further that they did paint themselves into a corner because, again, we, we kind of... See, the frustrating thing about the Craig era is, is again, we know that they kind of knew what they wanted to do, kind of <laughs> didn't. Right. You know, every film kind of was like, are, are we going to do a standalone? Are we going to yes. pick up where the last one led off? By the time they got to this one, it was... I mean, and, and I was majorly on board with the idea... I want the next one to be a standalone mission. I want him right. to walk into M's office, get a mission, leave. Which we and thought go. we were going to have at the end of Skyfall. Exactly, right. Then they do Spectre, 
where it's not that at all. Nope. Once again, we're going rogue. We're doing this thing. And then, of course, Spectre ends with him throwing the gun and, and driving off into the sunset with Madeline. So when this one picked up, again, going back, we had almost six years to talk about what we wanted from Bond 25. And yeah. I remember, like I said, I remember standalone mission. But honestly, the other part of me is like, but how do you how do you do that now? You get like at the very last film, you're yeah. going to do that. So you really did have to put a punctuation mark at the end of this, you know, in a way that makes the whole thing pretty much coherent and together. Yeah. So I, 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 I still fall on the idea. You, again, you bring up great points. I mean, there's certainly other ways to do this. In fact, I'll actually mention something that you said to me, and I think you were spot on correct. You know, a, a lot of the discussions we've had would sort of fall under the category of, but I think there was a better movie in here. Mm. And one of the things you said to me is, why didn't they have Blofeld be the villain in this one? Yes. And I thought, you know what? I can't argue with that. That yeah. makes good sense. I mean, I see what they were trying to do with this. Remy Malik is is was especially when they started this very popular. So okay, mm -hmm. I can see what they were trying to do. But you know what? That was a great point. Especially if they're going to go back and bring in the Bond girl from the last one. Right. Why not bring in the Bond villain who I thought was frankly under you know yeah. pretty underutilized in the last one? Give him a similar because I think I mean I think Madeline was. Totally underused inspector, really kind of shined much more in this. Absolutely. And I, I liked her much more in this, too. So I think Blofeld could have gotten the same treatment, where, yeah. you, where you let him break out of jail. Let him be the bigger-than-life villain he's supposed to be. I think that's what we're trying to tell Eon is, please, just get, get with the fans to help. <laughs> just, just the treatment. I'm not saying Joe and I can write better than these people, but just the overall treatment. Or if you want to do an ideation session, I mean, I'll, I'll pay for the hotel room. We can get whiteboards. And <laughs> all right. So, but I will say this. So mm. now this is my uh, this is my pound of flesh that I'll give you, um, because the thumbnail says, you know, is this is the actors, you know, this is the worst film. Um, Daniel Craig in No Time to Die. I think does some of his best acting in the entire series. Mm. Although I love Quantum of Solace because he has an economy of words and he's badass and he's brooding and he's he's quiet and, and has more action. I do like that version of Bond, but from an acting standpoint, the stuff he did in Jamaica, the stuff he did with Felix, mm. the stuff he does with Madeline, I'll just say it right there in Norway, it's unbelievable acting and it shows that daniel craig is not just an action star yeah he is an actor's actor yeah. the guy could act and he acts the living shit out of this film yeah so yeah. i can't say anything there's a couple little awkward moments um you know little awkward things that almost doesn't sound like bond but that doesn't mean he's not acting well yeah he's still doing a great job with his acting yeah. No, I, I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, I, I agree with what you said earlier about I think Craig went into this knowing this was going to be his swan song and wanting it to wanting to go out on a high note. So I, I do think he was bringing his A game for this film. Um, even some of the things, like you said, some, some moments which feel do feel like a tiny bit awkward. That's not good. <laughs> Um, I think that's him trying to sort of stretch the stretch a little bit. Yeah. Don't know if it always works, but I th but but to your point, I think he's a hundred percent there to to again to to work. Yeah, and uh, so <laughs> I think this is going to be kind of here we start the the, the snowball going. Um, <laughs> I think his acting is much better in this than it is in Spectre. I think yeah. Spectre he comes across as a little wooden and not mm. bad as Bond wooden, but just like even the whole scene in Solden with Madeline when they're going back and forth, that should be a really fun scene. And he's like, you know, that's not the thing that looks good on a form. <laughs> like, I almost feel like he's doing a reading potentially yeah. as opposed to in in No Time to Die when he's doing his lines in connection. Yeah. I feel yeah. like he is invested. I yeah. feel, feel like he's invested as an actor and mm -hmm. he's invested as Bond. I buy it. Yes. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you there. Um, so, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I kind of feel like, the, you know, at the end of the day, we really sometimes just look at these films and, and ask ourselves, is, is it giving us the thing that we want? And, and there's just too many things in here where I'm looking at this film saying, like, 
that's boy, I've been dying for this and I've been dying for that. And and a lot of it was just, I mean, like I said, I, I keep going back to, I, I said to, you know, one of our discussions before, you know, one of the things I love in these films is when you see Bond in a moment of downtime. Right. You know, and we got tons of that in this. I mean, there's a whole, I, I, I would say, yeah. you know, a, a good percentage of this film is Bond doing downtime. And he's enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself. And yeah. again, it was, it was Bond, you know, it was downtime with a woman in his life and there was downtime with him without a woman in his life. So you really mm -hmm. got a good That's sampling true. of like just seeing Bond in his own element. Like yeah. this is how he would be living his life. Um, and, and again, I, I feel like, you know, from the first time we opened up and found Bond at the Baccarat table, he says, Bond, James Bond, then he gets called into the office, you know, it, it was like, but we, th that's the stuff we like. We, we yeah. want to see Bond just living, you know, and, and living the way we all kind of want to live. So There are a lot of those moments. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. So, yeah, I, there was a lot of that good stuff. So, I mean, I was, for the most part, I'm just chewing this up. I mean, I was yeah. absolutely just loving it. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, there's, there, there is a part of me that wishes, you know, getting back to the alternate mm -hmm. universe um, analogies, I, I would love to look into an alternate universe where at the end they didn't kill him off right. and and seeing if everyone would have been happy with that. I, I'm, I mean, I kind of feel like I don't know if the naysayers would, would be really happy if, if they had just changed that ending. Right. You know. Bond. Would, would we have still found problems with it? Absolutely. I uh, I don't know. But would I, we have? Would we have? I mean, there is a huge in the Bond community, huge swing of people. Maybe yeah. even the majority who are like, mm, no, yeah, yeah, you don't kill yeah. Bond. Sorry. Right. And by the way, this is my challenge today. So mm -hmm. as I sit here before you, and I need your help as my shrink, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I I don't know what I'm going to actually, when you ask the final question mm. of, is this his worst yeah. Bond film? I actually don't know the answer yet, and I'll tell you why I don't know the answer, truly. Um, Spectre is not as well made. It it's, doesn't have those crescendo moments, mm. like No Time to Die. It doesn't have his best acting, um, but Spectre, <laughs> Bond does live. He does right, live right. in the end. Uh -huh. uh, so. I'm just, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, oh crap, at some point, Joe's going to ask me, so Dave, at the end of the day, uh -huh. and I don't, I haven't formulated an answer because it could be that killing off Bond has not only maybe potentially made it Craig's worst to me as a mm. Bond fan, it may have made it the worst in the series. I know, but, but here's the thing, I'm... It, it, this is helping to talk about. I should be uh -huh. lying on a couch because a part of me is like having you take me back and go, well, remember Cuba and Jamaica and his mm. acting and, you know, the color of it and the sound and the music. I love the music so much better than the music inspector. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the score and everything. So I'm, I'm actually moving to the side of like, oh, no, this is not certainly not the worst in the series. Mm. And David, don't just take the ending and whitewash everything else that's so good about it. It's almost like right, when right. a friend does something wrong to you, mm -hmm. and you and you go, you look at that, and you go, "Well, you did one thing, so guess what? You're now that friend that did that one thing, uh -huh. as opposed to you know, 20 years of, of friendship that's been so positive." Right, right, right. Yeah, like yeah. if I'm going to be an adult about No Time to Die, uh -huh. I shouldn't call it Craig's worst. Well, Woo! <laughs> I need to lie down. This is just water, people. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, first of all, you know, call it whatever you feel it actually is. Um, but your point is very well taken. I, I, I will say this, you know, it, it's funny to me when, like, when you talk about Spectre and see that, and that goes to my earlier question about is it just the ending that's bothering you, or is it the whole thing? And when you compare it to Spectre, where you, where you, where you say it's, it's not as well done, the story doesn't work, all this other stuff. But at least he lives. That I mean, that tells me that uh, you know. It's mostly the end. Right. I yeah. mean, but we all kind of you know, like we have a moment as we're watching a film. Yeah. Where, like, it could be early on, it could be middle, it could be toward the end, where we make a decision. You know, hmm. you know, unconsciously, we like this or we don't like it. Right. And and I and I do agree with you that once you made that decision. It gains momentum, yeah. and, and suddenly now, I, I, it's like it's like I don't think I like this, and then you find all the things else that you didn't like, mm -hmm. or it goes the other way where you're forgiving all the all the bad things. Right. Um, but I mean, honestly, when you compare it to Spectre, 
and I say to him, I, I look at Spectre and I say, that's a film to me, I mean, again, it's, it's, it doesn't look very good. And I totally admit I'm an easy lay when it comes to like just a good looking film. Like you give me yes. good color, good cinematography. Yeah. I feel like half of this film, Di uh, No Time to Die, was filmed at dusk where you had that perfect oh. light where everything is, is just purple it's and orange and I'm just, I'm just like just loving it. Yeah. Um, Even when he dies, it yeah. looks beautiful. I get yeah, it. I mean the whole thing looks good, but so, so you have you have Spectre right. again, an ugly looking film. Um, the yeah. action scenes are not very good. Yeah. Bond's her heroism to me is not on display. I mm. feel like there's so many times when, in fact, frequently, he's doing wrong things or <laughs> making big mistakes, but the, but yeah. the, the script sort of glosses over it quickly. And honestly, just the fact that he by hook or by crook because they just let him escape the gigantic Spectre headquarters oh. by firing one bullet, yeah, that was... blowing the entire thing to Kingdom Come, and go, and then at the very end, just because he drives off in the Aston Martin, again, you know, we're used to Bond on boats and yeah. in water and stuff. This one just, eh, just he's just, just driving down the block. I mean, it, you know, didn't take a whole lot to film right. that, fine. I kind of feel like, again, that to me, it... it just because he survives at the end does nothing for me. You're right. Um, so the fact, so I look at this one and all of the, I mean, the action is spectacular. The 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 scenery is spectacular. There's so many, you know, bondish moments that are fun. There are the music is, the music is great. is stellar. Yeah. So I mean, there's so much working. So really, for me, it really does boil down to like whether or not you feel that that was a fitting conclusion. And I, like I said, I look at it. Like Goldeneye has never been one of my favorites because I always feel that it it it's paying homage to to James Bond, mm. not really making its own mark, not really creating right. a, any history, um, and I feel like this is one of those moments where they just said, "Look, we we can, you know." pay it some lip service and, and then not actually do it, or we can do it and we can just see it through and yeah, see this vision through till the I end. I will say that. And you know, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I, I do feel like it's it probably I can see this coming back, and and a lot of people are going to rediscover it as sort of an On Her Majesty's type film, not as perfect story wise or anything as On Her Majesty's, but this was a seminal moment in Bond. Mm. And plus, I also have to wonder if down the road, because again, we haven't even started to look at the future of James Bond. Right. Barbara Broccoli said it'll take a while. To which most of us said, "Yeah, we know. We we know. It, it always takes. It's gonna take. Everything's gonna take a long yeah. time. We know. We're we're very familiar with that. <laughs> We've been conditioned. Um, but I kind of feel like you know, once James Bond, once we see the new incarnation of James Bond, mm -hmm. once we start getting those fun films again, and and you know, are we gonna look back at uh, at this one and say maybe we were a little too hard on it? You know, because we're, we're getting our dose of James Bond. The fact that, yeah. th that the last five minutes of that film actually didn't have Bond in it because they because he died. I, are, are we okay with it now? That that. Yeah. I, wow. Okay. This is a real. Uh, it's probably important for me because I feel this is like with a deep conversation. Got, by the way, we're filming this at freaking ten o'clock in the morning. No alcohol. This is not a good Seriously, idea. Right? Do I'm not try this without a nap. The next one where we have alcohol is going to be ugly. So. You've, it, this is really good for me to hear because I think uh, my niece said this to me when I did a video with her that she said, I have too much baggage. I have a lot of James Bond baggage. I come to the table, a, a Bond film, and I have all this baggage that I need to unpack before I even start to enjoy the film. Mm. And she's right. So when they killed off Bond and made that committed decision to do that, I think it is, it is creating this... Um, this tinting, like a specter tinting, this mm. yellow tint over everything with no time to die. And I do think that that tint will wear off. Honestly, having these types of discussions is like freaking therapy, um, <laughs> does help because it is a good film. And I think I will appreciate it over time. I think I'm still in the the blast. It's almost like that, hey, honey, um, mm. you know, I need a little alone time right now moment of the blast of that decision of killing him off. I don't think they'll do it again. Mm. I think this was their, you know, moment of being like, let's try something different. Yeah. Well, we got that out of the way. But I, I will say that you are right. And I'm, I'm ready to say this out loud. <gasps> um, no Time to Die is not 
Daniel Craig's worst. It's okay. certainly not the worst of the series. And to me, it's still, Spectre still flags that <laughs> proudly flag waving high and proud. Um, but no, I do think No Time to Die is better than Spectre. I think that the other thing that I'll say for this is there are moments, there are ways that this was filmed, there are action scenes, there's even Bond enjoying life that is better, mm. ready for this, better than every other Daniel Craig film. Mm, I, I, I think there's moments that are like so perfect. Yeah. I mean, Jamaica and Cuba to me, and I've told this to people, I could, if, if you know, God forbid, some, some guy with horns came to me and said, I'm going to put you in hell, <laughs> and you only have 40 minutes of movie time to keep on a, a roll, I would take those two moments, yeah. and I'd just be like, all right, mm -hmm. get me a sodi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because they're so good, yeah. and maybe even better than every other Daniel Craig film in mm. that regard. So I'm gonna say no, Daniel Craig's No Time to Die last film is not his worst. Okay, all right, well I, I all right, I'm kind of, I'm, That was a lot of work on Joe's part, by the way. <laughs> Seriously, right? That was oh a goodness. lot of work. Wow. Uh, Obviously it's not for you either. No, 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 oh no, no, of yeah. course not. Yeah, no, no, it, it's, it's far from his worst. Um, and I know you're not ready to do a ranking. Yeah, I'm not, not quite ready to do that, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, but yeah, I, I, it clearly not his worst. Right. I, I think, right. I think when I actually do a ranking, I think people, it, it'll be more of like, which one is going to fall in the middle. I, yeah. I, I think most people will know what my favorite is. It'll be a wrestling match between my two least favorites and then the two above that. Oh, um, well, hold on a second. So I know Spectre is your least favorite. Yeah. So is, is Quantum better than No Time to Die to you? <laughs> no, definitely not. No Time to Die is better than Quantum. Oh, of course, hundred percent. Get the f out. <laughs> no, I knew you. I mean, that. I yeah, knew you I mean, yeah. and, and again, I like I, I I've, <laughs> I've listen. I, I, you know, the, the quantum resurgence. I, I definitely get it. You know, I, I get what it's about. Um, there is a logic to it. I get it. Um, I don't. I don't hate quantum. But again, right. there's so many scenes in here in No Time to Die that I think are. are I mean, if you want to do an apples to apples comparison, you know, when we when we killed off one of our, our favorite supporting characters. Far, done far better in this film than in Quantum. You know, I, I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that I, I, I look at this movie and I, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's so many things in this film that are just so competent. I think I was like so smartly done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, like again, it has, and, and again, I can, you know, just for the sake of, of, of balance, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about some of the things that I, I think are silly in this film or just don't work give us a couple um, for example and 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 this one even as i was driving here today i had the film playing in, in my ears as as i was driving um you, you know that that scene where he goes back to mi6 he's in m's office yeah and they do this great scene you know is this the smaller or, or did you get bigger oh, did you get smaller good, or did yeah. the desk get yeah. bigger um and they have they have it out m barks at him chases him out of the office right the next time you see Bond and him together is that scene Hammers. on the Thames, yes, yeah. and and they're now they're just just kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. So this happened and that happened, I've let a, a and little, they're smiling and, yeah. and and I'm and I'm thinking like that was literally the next scene with them. Yeah. So it was like like what what was that for? And I remember and I, again I've heard that I think Craig had an injury, so they were just trying to fill some time or whatever. Mm. They, so they filmed that shot, um, not terrible. But again, it's just like, well, but you just did that that big scene where they just yeah. shoot each other out. So so what's, you know, I mean, I can't just buy this one too quickly. Um, by the way, when Tanner showed up, the first time I saw it, I said to myself, I said, watch this. Bond is going to tell him, let's go to Scott's and get a, get a, a black velvet and a cracked crab. Because that's what they used to do <laughs> in one of the novels. And I was so sure that was going to happen. In fact, that they did. And I was like, oh, oh man. Um, that would have been epic. Uh, honestly. That would have made it my favorite Craig film. <laughs> but, um, so, but, so yeah, that, I mean, there's a couple. Of things. And, of yeah. course, listen, I, I can't defend the, the, the Safin plot. Yeah. And I keep saying, and again, I, I hate to fall back on, well, I think it was production problems and script problems because because at the end of the day, you can only judge the final product. So right. you, you can't keep making excuses for things that don't work. Um, but I, I see that and that's kind of what it screams out to me. I think yeah. I think something happened, in, you know, where, where they were starting one way 
had to change gears. Um, people have suggested that the, the the weapon came from the garden, but they had to change that because possibly because of the c word. Mm. Um, and so that's why we have nanobots and stuff. So it's like all right, similar but different, whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot that's that's kind of not working there, and I yeah. sit there and I you know can't help but to try to put the puzzle pieces back in order to try to figure out what they were originally going for. Yeah. Um, but then you'd have to go back to like Octopussy and said, well, how did Roger Moore get into that gorilla suit so quickly? Right, that's, right, right. That's physically yeah. impossible. Right. And I, I get it that, you know, I could, if I was you and I was okay with the ending, I would take spackle to the whole film and it would <laughs> fill in all the gaps. And yeah. You'd be like, wow, guys, yeah. I'm just blown away. How could you not be? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, that, that's, right, that's true. And, and honestly, like when people complain about the third act problems, I mean, for me, I think at least half of the Bond films have third act issues they where, I, I mean, the a world is not enough where they're running around in the sub and I can't tell which way is up or down and it's just not a very, you know, kind of lackluster yeah. ending. A lot of them, even some of the ones when, like, the cavalry shows up and there's, it's it not, not totally there for me sometimes. So the fact that this one kind of falls apart in the end what else is now? I, I, I mean, yeah, you know, that's true. It's almost a trope to fall apart. Uh, kind of, yeah, in a, a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, um, all right. So, uh, <laughs> what have what have we concluded here? What have we learned today? Yeah. Um, well, I I will again. I need to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> this, seriously, this this has been like, boy, who, heavy who, who deep knew, stuff. Right? Seriously. Yeah. Um, so I get, yeah, like I said, I I have made, you know, I I can't say that this is a. It's hardly a perfect Bond film. Hmm. It, it, it definitely falls into that category. I mean, there's there's some films that there's some films that we regard as great films. Right. They're just not our favorite films yeah. because you know whatever. Um, so a lot of the Bonds are like that, where we acknowledge that some are empirically not as great as others, but we happen to love them. Yeah, some of them sure. are, are, are just really great masterpieces, but not the ones that we reach for all the time. Um, I think this one is it's it, it is a top tier Bond film. I think it is it's it's very well made, very well executed, gives us a whole lot to sink our teeth into. Not perfect, not perfectly written. I would almost go as far as to say it's riddled with with plot holes in a lot of ways. But but I, I think I even said to you before, I don't even know if I would call them plot holes, just not polished the way they should yeah. be. There's the a usual lot of, usual Bond permeability of plot. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, this one. I mean, this one does have things that clearly it it looks like it's going one way and then suddenly it's going this way, and, right. and I'm not really sure why that happened. Um, Bond goes to to Vesper's grave. Walks right up to the to the grave. The bomb goes right off in his face, perfectly, and he dusts himself off and and just keeps on going. Yeah. It's like, guys, you know, <laughs> or grenades fall down on him, rain down right, the and hallway. you just uh, right, exactly. You throw a grenade Get at the bad a guy. Door. That's all you got to do. Well, I, I mean, it, it, yeah. So things like that. Like I said, I'm 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 just kind of. It, I mean, it's seriously, you, you throw a grenade at a bad guy, he explodes into a million pieces. You throw a grenade at a hero, it throws him twenty feet. He puts yeah. himself off and keeps on going. He's more mad. He's, he's right, angry. Exactly. Um, so I, right. I want to ask a Joe Darlington question. Bring it. Um, so you always ask in a lot of your interviews, uh, you'll say to somebody like, "All right, which Bond film has a lot of fingerprints on it?" Mm. Meaning, you're know, the one you just grab to and. Th is No Time to Die one that has a lot of fingerprints on it? Uh, not yet. I, I've okay. only, you know, I, I saw it, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great question because, I mean, Casino, I saw that in the theater six times. Hmm. This one I saw in the theater three times, okay. which ironically is tied for me with Quantum, which I also saw three times. <laughs> the other two, I'm not sure. I think Spectre, I only saw Sky twice. Sky saw a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm tr I don't know how many times I saw it. But it certainly I, mean, I didn't think break. I saw it at least three or four with you. With Good, you, yeah, you. it's actually very true. Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely a few times. Probably about four for Skyfall. Okay. I think, maybe. Um, so yeah, I, I and and since I since it's been out, um, I've it's been in the DVD player. Right. You know, I purposely bought a hard copy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so it's been in the player. It's it's kind of been playing in the background a lot. Um, I. Still haven't really sat and watched it all the way through. Maybe once right. since I got it. Um, so it's definitely not not quite up there with Casino, uh, but I it's 
close. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably... I mean, honestly, the ones that I tend to gravitate towards are the ones that are good-looking movies. So Skyfall is a big one. Mm-hmm. That, that, that one gets played a lot. Yeah. Um, Casino, right up there. Um, this one probably almost as much, I'll say. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty heady. Yeah, yeah. for me, it's... Um, I, I've gone back this year in particular. It's more of when I need to study something, yeah. You know, yeah. analyze, research, yeah. etc. So it's become, and it's unfortunate. It's become kind of the colder bond. Mm. You know, the colder in the decision at the end, and the colder because I've become very analytical about it. Even this conversation today has been very analytical. It's yeah, not, we're not sitting here talking about. Remember that popcorn moment when, <laughs> which would be great. I mean, I'll, I'm going to love that. Yeah. I'm hoping that it comes a year from now. But you know, maybe in a. You know, six or seven years when we have a new Bond film, uh, mm-hmm. they'll 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 be popcorn moments galore. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting again. I, I you know I, I I know I remember when you and I were talking with Calvin mm-hmm. and Dutch, and the the four of us were sort of talking about the film. And I said then I said you know it'll be it will be really interesting to come back to this one in maybe like a year and see how it's settled. I kind of feel like maybe because. You know, we're we're living in a sort of a different era where I mean, the film is is on video almost weeks after yeah. the film is in the theater, so it's almost like we don't have that period where we haven't seen it in quite a while. True. You know, we used to we used to see it in the theater, and then much much later we'd have it on on Blu-ray and right. we'd watch it. Um, now it's kind of just always with us, so it's kind of hard for it to really you know settle too much. Um, but um, I, I but I think for this one maybe it'll take a little longer, like maybe like five years, and then we'll all talk about it again. Yeah. And say what what did we think of that one? And, you know, and and see if we feel differently. I, I'm ready for it, man. I think that's uh, that's that's the next video. We'll yeah. Do. I, I think because you're doing like a video every five years, so. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <snap. laughs> Got to get back to it. Um, I will say this, and this will be sort of my closing remark: is, right. is that I think I think that the. I think that this film will will kind of over time people will start to really admire it more because it did it was a little bolder and it did kind of make its mark in the history of Bond you know mm-hmm. and it kind of like I said it kind of went for it as opposed to you know mm. and, and I and I, I I will sort of blame part of that I I think Daniel Craig just said I can't do five more years of people saying are you gonna do another one <laughs> so, he, he, you know that, that literally could be all this really is but I do think again it, it kind of you know it's one of those films like Honor Majesties that really does you know put put sort of a like you know it it's a red letter day for Bond it's yeah. you know they 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 put the pin in the map and said, "This is one where we did something that you'll you'll probably never see again." And it was and you'll have never, never done since. You'll never forget it. Um, so again, not perfect, hmm. but but really did kind of make its mark. And I, I I have to give it credit for that. Well, I I think that conclusion is a big steaming pile of uh, duty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really well said, but I, I will say the ending, although for me is doo doo. Um, it is definitely not the worst Craig film. I think it it uh, doesn't connect back to our theory, mm-hmm. and I think uh, the producers and Daniel Craig, knowing that this was the last one, they put all the heart into it. Yeah. They put all the skills that all the people making the Bond film into it, mm-hmm. and it shows. It's it's a yeah. it's a really good film. It doesn't have the ending that I came to the table with. I'll suck my thumb for another couple of years <laughs> until a new one's out, and then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the nice thing about the Bond films. It's like an Etra sketch. We'll have a new one soon. Yeah. Soon. There you Ish. go. 100%. Yeah. Joe, thanks for doing this. Thank again. you. Thank you. Thanks for allowing me back on your channel. You, anytime, my friend. Thank you for, for, for doing this and opening up your your, your domicile to uh, this discussion. It's, it's and, uh, everybody soundstage. That's except it. for you. I don't know you. That's it. So, I, so as always, I'm your good buddy, Head of Section, Joseph Darlington. And with me... David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. All right. And we will see you here... Reasonably soon. Incredibly soon. Yeah. There you go. Take care.